Okay? In other words, say y equals x squared, and dy is going to be what? 2x dx. And then change all my dy's into 2x dx, keep my x, and wherever there's a y, okay? So the answer is, it doesn't matter how you do the integral. Just because you're finding the y center of mass doesn't mean you have to do the integral in terms of dy. You could do it in terms of x. But when you're first originally setting it up, you got to make sure you set it up correctly. Then once you get to the integral stage, you can do the integral in terms of y or x, whichever one you prefer, whichever is easier. Like if I was the one doing this, I wouldn't want square root of y. You know, I, I could try to avoid that. So I would do, I would do it in terms of x. So I would put here uh, y equals x squared, put here 4 minus x, put here dy is 2x dx over, put here 4 minus x, keep that as that, put here 2x dx. The 2 and the 2 cancel from the top and the bottom. And now, so simplify this, you get 4x cubed minus x to the fourth dx over integral the 4x minus x squared dx from 0 to 4, 0 to 4. So even though we're finding the y center of mass, we're still integrating 0 to 4 because we're doing the integral in terms of dx. You see? So you don't go 0 to 16 because I chose to do the integral in terms of dx. So when you're doing the limits, the limits of the integral are based on the x. You see? So once I do this, what do I get here? This one gives you x to the fourth, so 4 to the fourth minus this one is x to the fifth over 5 divided by, what is that? 4x, uh, 2x squared, right? 2 times 4 squared minus 4 cubed over 3. So multiply that out, tell me what you get here for your answers. I'll erase some of these stuff here. So it should be something like, uh, if you do this, it should be, let's see, 4 squared cancels. Uh, you can factor that out. This one is squared 4, this one uh, cubed, right? So it's going to be something like 16 minus 64 over 5 divided by 2 minus four-thirds, so I simplified it. Uh, 80 minus 64 is 16 over 5 divided by two-thirds, which is going to be hmm? 4.8. See, does that make sense? The, if it was a perfect rectangle, the center of mass would have been at 8, right? So it lowered the center of mass, the y center of mass. So, yeah, it makes sense. So this represents this class of problems. Uh, it could be the problem can give you any kind of function. It could be this kind of function. 
So, I, you know, practice these. It's just a matter of getting used to that. You could say 0, 0, 16, 4, square root function. It could ask you to find the center of mass of that. You know. Here's another little twist it can give. It could say find the square root of this. This portion. I could make I could do that too over there. I could say Instead of asking for the center of mass of this portion, I can ask for this portion. So you see? And then in the next, uh, uh, next week, I'll show you how to find the moment of inertia of these kinds of stuff. OK? So I practice this. Practice what, well, how would you do it like that? How would you do it for this portion? How would you do it for that portion? Same function as that, you know. OK, now over here, you see that I've cut out a cardboard to show you the experimental version of this. So this is, looks like a kind of a y squared function, y equals x squared function. The experimental way to find the, the center of mass, you can't really apply the finger rule anymore for the two-dimensional object. So what you do is basically you hang it from a, a, y, a, a string. And you just draw a straight line based on the gravitational field. OK? And you can see I've already done that in the, in the past. So just draw a straight line due to the gravity of the, of the object. And then get another string. Now, do you have to hang it up these strings from any particular place on the object? No. I just cut any hole in there, any place. OK? So you get another string over there. And then a third point, and all three go together, you know. Now, if I had a fourth one, if I had a fourth one, let's say over here, let's say I cut out a string here, and then I hung it from there, that'll be even better. I could do four, I could do five, I could do six. So that one, if I hang it like this, how should it be? So you could, uh, it should also go through that same point. point yeah, the through the center of mass, exactly. So no matter where you hang it from, it could be 10 places, 11 places, 12 places, whatever. So it should all go through the center of mass of the object. Okay. So now you know the experimental way of doing it and the theoretical way of doing it. Okay, with that, let's now start chapter 10.